All right, so good morning. This is um, Dr. Gomez from Arte Facial. So I am an uh, oculoplastic surgeon here in San Jose, Costa Rica. For the last uh, three or four weeks, we've been doing some webinars and uh, talking about different, different topics in oculofacial plastic surgery. But uh, today, I, I decided to do something different. We have uh, very, very, we have many uh, foreign and international patients, and so um, someone requested that I would actually go ahead and do a webinar in, in English for those of you who are coming from uh, Europe and North America and um, either coming here for surgery or, or live here. And so today's webinar is gonna be um, directed to all my patients, but specifically to patients who are uh, looking into oculofacial plastic surgery in Costa Rica and who are coming from, from a different country or um, perhaps are expats here in, in Costa Rica. Well, so basically uh, what I wanted to talk about was um, oculoplastic surgery in Costa Rica. There's uh, multiple topics we can talk about, but um, I think right now what I, what I want is uh, to get oculoplastic surgery in the name out there. And uh, for those people who are looking for oculoplastic surgery in Costa Rica, who are uh, familiar with the term oculoplastic surgery, that actually have, have a better idea of, of um, who does oculoplastic surgery and how we do oculoplastic surgery here in Costa Rica. And so uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a presentation that um, I'm gonna use as an illustration to talk about our, our specialty. And basically, well, um, oculoplastic surgery or oculofacial plastic surgery is um, a surgical specialty, um, which basically uh, deals with um, uh, functional and reconstructive and aesthetic procedures uh, in the periocular area that is around the eyes and in the face, on the face. And so um, basically what we do as oculoplastic surgeons is to try to meet our patients' expectations and improve their quality of life. Before I talk about uh, my specialty, I, I, I'd like to um, go over my, my training, which I think it's, I believe is very important. Uh, basically, I started my, my training here in Costa Rica. It's, that's where I went to medical school. Then um, after, after I finished medical school here, I, I moved to Spain, to the beautiful city of Barcelona, and, and that's where I completed my uh, four-year residency in ophthalmology. And then later, we, I moved to, um, to the United States with my family, and, and that's where I completed a two-year Ace Opera's Fellowship in, in Michigan, in North America, and then finally decided to come back to my country. And so, um, well, basically, um, oculofacial plastic surgeons, uh, we are eyelid surgeons, I'm, I'm sorry, we are ophthalmologists, that is eye surgeons who have uh, specialized in, in, in all the tissues in, in surgery around, around the eyes and all the tissues that surround the eyes and in the face. Uh, minus the nose. I, I don't do uh, nasal plastic surgery, although I do have colleagues that do some uh, nasal uh, procedures. And um, I, I think that it's important when you're looking for an actual plastic surgeon that, um, you know, you look us up in, on our website um, as, as part of the ASOPERS community and a member of the American Society of Ophthalmic Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. I, I do uh, ask my patients to go into the ASOPERS website uh, to get a better idea of what we do as oculoplastic surgeons and uh, what our specialty, uh, specialty entails and um, uh, what our work does to improve your quality of life. And so I, I do encourage you, uh, perhaps at some point when you have a chance to, to go visit our website, um, asopers.org. All right, so um, oculoplastic surgery, like I mentioned, is, is a specialty within uh, the realm of ophthalmology, which is eye surgery. And so as oculoplastic surgeons uh, or oculofacial plastic surgeons, uh, we deal with different parts of the face, different structures uh, and anatomical units. And um, well, one of the main things that we do is um, eyelid and eyebrow surgery or surgery around the eyes, surgery of the um, upper third of the face, uh, including the forehead, the eyebrow and uh, the eyelids, uh, upper eyelids and lower eyelids. And eyelid and eyebrow surgery is both uh, functional, that is we, we treat uh, reconstructive, we do reconstructive procedures, for example, treating cancer, uh, eyelid skin cancer, and reconstruction of the eyelid after most surgery, for example, uh, or other functional conditions such as droopy eyelids, um, or you know, removing benign lesions around the eyes. But of course, we also specialize in aesthetic, uh, cosmetic eyelid surgery and eyebrow surgery. 
Uh, we'll talk more in detail about, about that in a, in a few moments. Now, oculoplastic surgeons are also specialists in the lacrimal drainage system. And so we do lacrimal surgery. Uh, we treat um, obstructed tear ducts, for example, chronically teary eyes, um, uh, lacrimal duct infections, and um, cancer in the lacrimal drainage system. And we do this by, uh, with medical treatment and medical therapy, but we're also specialized in endoscopic lacrimal surgery, so um, just like ENTs and, and other specialties do. Then another, another thing that as oculoplastic surgeons we do is um, surgery of the orbit. So basically the orbit is, that is the, the bony cavity where the eye is located and around it are different structures such as muscles, uh, arteries, veins, uh, lymphatic system, um, fat, and uh, all of these can cause problems, you know, specifically tumors or for example autoimmune conditions such as Graves' disease. And so we are orbit surgeons. Uh, not only are we dealing with the soft tissues around the eye, uh, the eyelid, the eyebrows, and uh, the drainage system, the lacrimal drainage system, but we're also orbit specialists. And finally, um, you know, oculoplastic surgery has, has grown, has expanded, um, starting from the eyelids uh, per se to oculofacial plastic surgery. Uh, and right now, as ASOPERS um, members, we are trained in uh, functional and mainly aesthetic surgery of, of the forehead, the mid face, um, lips, and uh, even the lower third of the face, the jawline, and the neck. And so um, that's sort of like an overview of what we do as oculoplastic surgeons. I wouldn't have time to talk about every, everything that we do in, in every specific um, area. Uh, so today what I'm gonna talk about specifically is um, uh, mostly aesthetic and reconstructive surgery of the eyelids and, and the periocular area, the area that surrounds the eye. Um, perhaps in, in later webinars, we can talk about lacrimal and orbit surgery. Although, you know, the, there's also, I do have a, a website where, where, you, where you guys can, can go in and, and um, see all the, the, the things that we do. All right, so um, like I said, as oculofacial plastic surgeons, one of the main things that we do is um, functional and aesthetic procedures of the eyelid and eyebrow unit. And, and I say eyelid and eyebrow unit because as plastic surgeons, it's very important for us to, uh, that our patients understand uh, that the eyelid and the eyebrow are one single unit. And um, as we can see in this model, um, if we see the, the area of the eyes, the eyes, uh, this, this youthful, this attractive, this elegant appearance uh, provided by the eyebrow, um, is, is actually provided by the eyebrow and the eyelid as a unit. So for example, if we were to remove the eyebrows in, in this beautiful model, uh, we would see that um, it actually completely takes away from the, the attractive, attractiveness of, of her face. And so this is important because um, one of the main things that I have patients um, come to my, my clinic uh, for is, is this, what we call the droopy eyelids. And so I want to talk a little bit about the droopy eyelids, which is one of the main things that we do as oculofacial plastic surgeons. And so um, I'm gonna, we're going to see the before picture of a patient that came to me to kind of like illustrate this, this, uh, this point of eyelid plastic surgery. So for example, this patient um, in her early 40s um, came to me uh, because she had this droopy eyelid appearance and, and excess tissue, excess skin hanging over her eyelashes. And so um, just to illustrate the importance of oculoplastic surgery in the decision making and approaching uh, either functional or aesthetic concerns for patients uh, on, in the face, I'm gonna use this particular situation, this particular uh, condition, this patient. Um, we could do this with lacrimal surgery, orbital surgery, we could do this with um, you know, cancer, eyelid skin cancer, but I'm gonna use this specific case of droopy eyelids to illustrate how important it is to uh, consult with an eyelid specialist when it comes to uh, making decisions. And so for this patient, for example, who felt that you know, even though he, she has lots of energy and uh, feels very um, young, her appearance, her droopy eyelids, and uh, made her look tired. And so she came to me thinking, you know, perhaps what I need is just a simple blepharoplasty, a procedure to remove um, skin from above my eyelashes. But this is particular, this is very important because um, when I saw this patient, I immediately recognized that the problem was in droopy eyelids, that is, 
It wasn't that her eyelid position was low. It wasn't that the muscle that elevates the eyelids was weak. Uh, and it wasn't that she had excess skin over her eyelashes. It's something, a term that uh, we call dermatoclasis. No, uh, the issue here was a droopy eyebrow. It wasn't a droopy eyelid, it was a droopy eyebrow. And this is where uh, the importance of recognizing that eyelid, the eyelid and the eyebrow are one unit, it's, it's so important. So in this patient, after uh, examining her and, and, and talking to her for, for a while, I, I realized that her concern originates from a um, descent of her eyebrows. Uh, this is something that's very common in younger patients. It's something that has a very strong genetic component, and it's something that can definitely affect a person's appearance and even emotional um, or mental state of mind. And so uh, for this patient, what, I, what, what we said, what, uh, we came to an agreement that the best procedure in her case would not be to raise her eyelids and would not be to remove skin from her eyelids, but it would actually be to perform an endoscopic procedure to raise the eyebrows. And um, although this is just one of the multiple procedures that oculoplastic surgeons do, uh, it illustrates perfectly uh, the importance of um, making the right diagnosis uh, and functional and aesthetic surgery of the face. Uh, if we made the wrong diagnosis and if we chose the wrong procedure in this patient, we could, um, first of all, not meet the patient's expectations, and secondly, run into very significant and even severe complications. Uh, well, let me explain. For example, in this patient, uh, if we, if, if we uh, decided to raise her eyelids, for example, something called atosis repair, or if we were just simply to do a blepharoplasty, which is a very common plastic surgery operation in which we remove uh, eyelid skin, um, this would not meet her expectations. This would not result in a, in a good aesthetic outcome. And this would actually cause severe complications. The patient could have, um, she could have inability to close her eyes completely, something we call lack of thalamus, causing irreversible corneal damage and severe uh, drying of the, of the surface of the eye. Plus, she would not get a good result. And so that is the importance of making the right diagnosis in order to meet the patient's expectations and improve their quality of life. So in this patient, young patient um, with this kind of like sad or, or tired appearance, uh, what we did was a uh, endoscopic brow and forehead lift. And as we can see in the after picture, we get a phenomenal result. Uh, but we did get a phenomenal result for the reason, for the simple reason that we chose the right procedure. Um, if we were just to remove eyelid skin, we would have not addressed her concerns. Uh, it would not have produced this, you know, phenomenal outcome. And um, the only way to get, and, and this is sort of like um, um, a, a, a very important thing, a uh, very important point is, the only way we can achieve great results and the only way we can meet the patient's expectations in facial plastic surgery is if we first do uh, make the right diagnosis, uh, whether it be for a reconstructive or functional reason or for a cosmetic concern. Uh, so in this patient, I think this perfectly illustrates the importance of making the right diagnosis, of knowing exactly what's going on, of uh, knowing what the patient's concerns are and how we can uh, meet those concerns and uh, uh, provide the right aesthetic outcome um, with the right procedure in a safe manner and without any complication. And so um, in this case, when we have a droopy eyebrow, what we did was the endoscopic forehead and brow lift, with what I've called the beauty lift, which is a procedure that we do endoscopically, meaning we uh, do not have to do any make any incisions on the skin, so there are no visible scars after the procedure, which is another one of, uh, of our goals as oculofacial plastic surgeons, uh, to be able to give great results uh, with minimal scarring or uh, invisible scarring. And so in the beauty lift, what we do is um, we make incisions in the scalp and then we use a, a camera or a telescope, uh, surgical camera to um, raise the forehead. Um, we don't have to shave um, any hair while doing this and, and endoscopically uh, we can actually achieve great results. So that's, that's sort of like an illustration of how we can use um, the best technology, which we have in Costa Rica. We have, um, you know, latest technology that we use in North America and in Europe and in Asia um, to get the best results. And so we can achieve um, 
great results with uh, minimal downtime, with um, you know, a long-lasting outcome, um, as long as we make the right diagnosis and as long as we do the right technique. Okay, so um, just like I said that the eyelid and the eyebrow are one unit, um, the eyelid and the cheek are also one unit. And this also is important because if we don't understand this as surgeons and if we don't transmit, transmit this information to our patients, it is very easy to choose the wrong procedure to make the wrong diagnosis and um, to use something that is not, to do a procedure that is not actually going to make any difference for the patient or is not gonna meet their expectations. I'm gonna use another example. Well, first of all, let me look at this model. Um, so like I said, the eyebrow and the eyelid is one unit, like we can see here in this, in this young, beautiful woman. And then on the lower eyelids, the lower eyelids and the cheek are also one unit. You see it's very, diff it's very difficult to, to see the division between the eyelid and the cheek because there is such a great volume and, and, and good tone of skin in this model. And this is how we look at, at, um, at our patients. Basically what we need to think of is about curves and angles and how volume in the fat pockets of the face and the tone of the skin and elasticity of the skin can create these beautiful curves and angles. We're gonna look at another, another patient of mine uh, to illustrate this point. And just like I, I illustrated for the um, eyelid and eyebrow units in oculoplastic surgery, also for the lower eyelid and the cheek unit, it is paramount, it is very important and, and fundamental to make the right diagnosis. This patient came to me because of his sad appearance, um, his tired appearance, uh, someone who's working, uh, someone who's got a family, uh, but he just wants to improve his appearance because he does not look the way he feels. However, it, although it may seem just like simple bags, what's, what's causing his, his tired appearance and maybe perhaps a little bit of excess skin on the upper eyelids, um, we need to examine this patient and make the right diagnosis. Uh, because, for example, if we were to just try to um, improve his bags with derma fillers, um, we're choosing the wrong patient for that. This is not the correct, uh, this is not the right patient to treat bags with fillers. And of course, not with Botox, because Botox doesn't work with that. But the surgeon has to know that. And the patient has to know why we're not using dermal fillers to improve his bags. Um, it is true that perhaps after a surgical procedure, uh, fillers may improve the appearance of the patient or serve uh, as uh, maintenance therapy, but I think that here it is important that the patient understands that the only way to achieve the right, the best results um, is surgery. So this is where we do a lower eyelid blepharoplasty in which we not only remove the bags, but we also uh, distribute the fat that has been, uh, that protrudes through, through, the, through the eyelid. And we also remove some skin and perform a procedure uh, to get a nice almond-shaped eye, um, which is a canthopexy in this case. And so we see the results. We see the results of this patient after about a month and a half. And so uh, this patient is very happy. He still looks like himself. We have not changed his features. Uh, he does not look operated. He does not look unnatural. But basically what we've done is basically just turn back the, the, the clock of aging. And we've achieved a great result uh, with no complications, with little downtime. And the patient knew exactly what he was going to get. And um, this is what oculofacial plastic surgery is like, and this is what we do here in Costa Rica. So for our foreign patients and international patients who are looking for results that are natural while improving their quality of life, their appearance, and uh, with minimal risk, that is what we do, and that's what we do at Arte Facial. And so that is why it's so important for, for people who live here, for, from other countries, to understand that we have um, great ways to approach facial plastic surgery in this country. So that's basically um, the aesthetic or cosmetic um, part of um, oculofacial plastic surgery. But I also wanted to talk about functional and reconstructive eyelid surgery, because this is very important. There is uh, quite a few patients who are coming from other countries who live in Costa Rica or are retired in Costa Rica, who deal with conditions such as um, uh, eyelid skin cancer, for example, or in, and that is very common. And they're looking for an ocular, for a plastic surgeon that specializes in that area around the eyes. Uh, and, and that is what we offer. And so when it comes to functional reconstructive surgery, we'll deal with many conditions, um, and you guys can check that out on the website. 
I'm going to talk just about a few conditions that we deal. For example, uh, island malposition related to um, laxity of the tissues uh, due to aging. For example, entropion, in which the eyelashes, um, the whole eyelid margin that is, um, starts to turn inward uh, and, and causes the eyelashes to rub against the, the surface of the eye. That is one of the conditions that we deal with in patients who are retired, who live in Costa Rica, foreign patients who come because they've got significant tearing and irritation. Or well, ectropin, for example, ectropin surgery, which happens also due to eyelid laxity, in which instead of turning inward, the eyelid margin turns outward. Uh, we deal with conditions, um, for example, such as Graves' disease. You know, I said that you know, octoplastic surgeons are orbit surgeons. Graves' disease is an autoimmune condition uh, in which there's a um, usually um, very, very strong um, inflammation around the eye in the orbit. There's eyelid retraction. Uh, and there's just like scared appearance uh, or surprised appearance for patients. It also affects the thyroid gland. Uh, and this other patient in which we have a syndrome called Horner syndrome, which is a droopy eyelid related to a neurological condition. Uh, all of this is something that we uh, as oculoplastic surgeons here in Costa Rica uh, treat. Um, eyelid skin cancer. Eyelid skin cancer is very common and it is very common, especially in the fair skin individuals. So I see many North American and European patients come to me because they have a lesion in their eyelid, which is eyelid skin cancer. Uh, eyelid skin cancer has to diagnose um, in, in, in the right time. It has to diagnose early, that is. Uh, eyelid skin cancer can definitely put the eye at risk. Um, and what we need to do is number one, we need to diagnose it, we need to make a biopsy, uh, and then we need to remove the cancer. We do most surgery here in Costa Rica, so for many skin cancers around the eye, we do most surgery, which is a surgical technique that allows us to preserve as much tissue as possible and to protect the eye uh, without removing any tissue that is unnecessary, but in order to remove the, the uh, tumor, the carcinoma completely. And then as oculoplastic surgeons, what we do is reconstruct the eyelid, um, always trying to achieve a functional eyelid uh, to protect the surface of the eye and to get a good aesthetic result, which is very important as oculoplastic surgeons and when we do functional surgery or reconstructed surgery or cosmetic surgery, we're always thinking about the health of the eye first and foremost. And so that is very important as oculoplastic surgeons, when we do surgery, whether it be reconstructive or whether it be cosmetic, we're always thinking about the safety and the health of the eye. And uh, eyelid skin cancer, it's no exception. Uh, well, there's also other conditions such as uh, what seems to be bags under the eyes, but it's actually congestion or edema and stuff that we need to recognize. For example, uh, infections of the lacrimal system. Uh, this seems to be sort of like a benign condition. Uh, we also do droopy eyelid surgery, which is ptosis surgery. It's not considered cosmetic, it's considered functional. And this patient, what she had was a weak uh, levator muscle, the muscle that raises the eyelids, so her eyelids are in a very low position. This is due to aging, and um, basically this is affecting her visual field. And, and so this is not a cosmetic surgery that we do, this is a very common functional surgery that we do. And lastly, like I said, you know, we have patients coming in for um, just kind of like a heavy, heavy uh, heaviness over their eyes and uh, who are not looking for an aesthetic outcome but basically they are just looking for a, a, um, a recovery of the visual function or visual field. And uh, what we need to recognize that is that although there are many patients that I treat because they come with functional concerns or because their vision is being affected or they just have tired, um, their vision is tired, um, we always, as we do functional surgery, do have an aesthetic result. So the patient may not come for cosmetic surgery. They may come because they have a concern because their vision uh, has, is, has decreased over time. But when we do the surgery, we also as facial plastic surgeons, ocular facial plastic surgeons, always try to achieve an aesthetic outcome. Okay, so um, this is sort of like an overview of um, oculoplastic surgery in Costa Rica. Uh, and so I, I said that there is a very, that is very important to consult with an oculoplastic surgery uh, so that we can do the, make the right diagnosis when it comes to functional reconstructive or uh, cosmetic concerns. Uh, once we make the right diagnosis here in Costa Rica, we have the technology that we need, we have all the procedures that we need. Uh, I train in the United States and in Europe, and so I've been able to, uh, I've had the privilege to be able to uh, bring all that knowledge and the latest technology to use that here in Costa Rica, in my country. And um, um, basically my, my main goal when I do, uh, when I see a patient who's coming for, for oculoplastic surgery is uh, to know what their expectations are, 
uh, to make the right diagnosis, to explain to my patients what alternatives, what options we have, either surgical or non-surgical, uh, so that it is important that my patient understands the risks of every alternative, of each alternative, uh, so that together we can choose the best option and then use the latest technology and the uh, most advanced techniques uh, to deliver, to meet the patient's expectations and to deliver a great aesthetic outcome. Finally, I just want to um, talk a little bit about our website. It is very important that you guys have access to a website with lots of information. Uh, it's artefacial.com, artefacial.com, that is my website. And in our website, if you go to our menu, we have um, basically all the information that you need in oculofacial plastic surgery. Uh, we have our services, um, both functional and aesthetic services. Um, I also do uh, surgery of the surface of the eye, so I do pterygian surgery, for example. And um, I also have a blog where I have lots of information and uh, questions that, pa that uh, my patients have. We have frequently asked questions also for different uh, functional and, and reconstructive procedures. And uh, we also have a before and after gallery. I think that it is very important that my patients know uh, or have a good idea of what to expect from their surgery. Uh, we ha I have lots of patients who have allowed me to um, use their photographs before and after pictures uh, to show my other pa potential patients what they can expect. Um, I want to focus here on, because I already spoke about aesthetic or cosmetic surgery, I want to focus here on um, eyelid tumors and reconstructive surgery. Like I said, uh, oculofacial plastic surgeons, we do cosmetic and we do functional surgery. One of the things that I see a lot coming from foreign patients is eyelid lesions, both um, benign and cancerous. And uh, it is important that patients who have eyelid lesions come for diagnosis, but it's also important that they know that here in Costa Rica, they can get, they can receive the best possible care. So for example, I've got this patient who's got a malignant eyelid tumor. Um, after removing the tumor uh, completely, and making sure that the margins are clear, we're able, I was able to reconstruct the eyelid, and this is one week after. You can, say, you, you can see it's one week after because the patient still got some um, bruising in his cheek, and you can see that we get a phenomenal result, and we get a functional eyelid, and we get a great aesthetic outcome. And so people who are coming from different countries, uh, from Europe, from Asia, from Latin America, and from the North America, can be confident that here in Costa Rica we have the technology that we need and we have the techniques that we need to um, uh, approach eyelid skin cancer and all sort of reconstructive or functional problems and achieve excellent results. Uh, I have another patient, for example, who had most surgery for um, eyelid skin cancer, very young patient. Um, you can see there's. Um, you, you can see that we removed about 80% of his eyelid. Uh, you can see all the the arrows here showing the medial and the lateral margins. There's uh, only about 20% of the eyelid on on the right side, which is still still there. The rest of it we had to excise. And about two months after surgery, reconstructing the eyelid, we get this great result. Okay, so. Um, that was it. That was the webinar. And, and basically, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you received plenty of information. My goal is to, um, um, it's for my foreign uh, patients, is for those uh, people who live here in Costa Rica who are looking for uh, a way to um, improve their appearance or uh, to deal with some kind of uh, functional uh, problem that is affecting their vision or is affecting some structure of their face to know that they can confidently um, have a procedure done in Costa Rica, that we have um, lots of, of surgeons who have excellent training and uh, lots of experience in oculofacial plastic surgery. We have the best techniques. Uh, we do most surgery. We have endoscopic cosmetic surgery procedures that we do. And um, also to encourage you to go to the website artefacial.com where you can have um, lots of information about what we do in our private practice and uh, that you can also go visit acehoppers.org to get more information about what we do as um, oculoplastic surgeons. So um, thank you very much for your attention and, and, and thank you for um, coming to see us and I, I hope that in the future we can um, talk about more other procedures in oculofacial plastic surgery. And that's, that's bye for today.